What's up robot builders? So today what we're gonna actually talk about is the ultrasonic sensor. And on the little bot budget, the ultrasonic sensor are the two eyes on the robot. And what it does is it sends out a sound wave that is at the ultrasonic frequency of sound. It bounces off of something and it comes back. And by timing the time for that wave to go out, hit something and come back, you're able to determine how far away that something is. Now the ultrasonic sensor is really easy to set up on the little bot. It's uh, it plugs right into the port there on the little bot main board. But here is the actual code that we're going to get uh, and use for this. So as soon as you open up your uh, Arduino sketch here, I've named it ultrasonic sensor demo. You've got the two uh, main components of your uh, program, which are the main setup and the main loop. But before that, we need to define a couple of things. And those two things that we're going to define are actually the pins that the ultrasonic sensor on the little bot board connect to. And on the little bot board, uh, the main pins that are able to connect to the ultrasonic sensor and send out pings are A2 and A3. Those are the pins on the nano, which then connect to the leads on the MEPED board that go to the ultrasonic sensor. So this is how we get those set up. The reason we're using a pound to define is to create a constant. And the way this works is I don't want to have to put in A2, A3 all over that place because I don't remember what these are. I can't remember these pins off the top of my head. I would much rather say the echo pin, the trigger pin. So I'm naming, assigning the value of A2 and A3 to the constant of trig pin and echo pin respectively. So basically, if I want to come down here and say x is equal to uh, echo pin, then that is the same as saying x is equal to the, the value, or the, yeah, the, the x is equal to, sorry, a2. So these two statements are equivalent because echo pin is simply the holding value and constant name of a2 and a3 but it's easier to use. So that's why we do these pound defines. If you want to learn more about pound define, I'll put a link in the description. So now we want to go into the void setup and we want to, in setup, what you do is you set up the board to and the pins of the board to do the specific tasks that you want. So in this case, we want to set up the pins of the ultrasonic sensor to output a signal and input a signal, a digital signal. So in this case, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to create pin mode values. We've got pin mode for the trig pin. The trigger pin is the output. The trigger sends the ping out into the world, a single pulse of s ultrasonic sound. And then the, pit, the echo pin receives that echo back. And then based on when you release that trigger signal to when you finally receive the echo, that is how you can determine how far something has begun. So now we've taken pin mode, trig pin, which is the same as A2 or A3. I mean, again, you could just say A3 right here if you wanted to, but that, that's not very good style and it's, uh, it's harder to work with. Trig pin. Okay, now in addition to this, we also wanna be able to read uh, the serial output. We wanna read what the Arduino is seeing uh, via USB, so we want to start up the uh, serial terminal here. So serial.begin means that the USB uh, is connected for the Arduino Nano so that it can start sending uh, values over USB. So let's clean that up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now for the main loop. In the main loop, there's first we want to do is define our variables here. And the two variables that we're going to be uh, looking for are the duration between the ping and when it's received, how long the wave is in flight, and figure out what that distance is. So we're going to call the, and since both of those values will likely be fractional values, we're going to make them longs. So go ahead and type out long, duration, distance. By using a comma, you're able to def define both of these new variables as, uh, <laughs> excuse me, a, a long variable. And again, duration is how long the wave is in flight between when it was pinged and when it's received, and distance is going to be the actual physical distance in inches or centimeters uh, that the uh, robot, uh, the the sensor is away from something. So now, now we want to actually send those signals, and the way you do that is with a digital write. It's very simple. So we want to start our ping, so we're going to do a digital write. 
and that's going to give us our ping there. Let me get everything set up here. I'm going to quick ch check for yourself if you're ever working with these things. There's a the auto oh, edit. Where is it? Used to be an auto format and all this stuff. Oh, there we go. There's the auto format. I got to get the the indention correct for myself there. So with the digital right trig pin low is we're going to set the digital pin low because right now we've turned it on and we've made it a digital pin, but we don't know what value it has. So we're going to set it low to basically zero out that pin and make sure that it's not sending anything. And to make sure that it's not sending anything, we're going to go ahead and use uh, the delay and we're going to delay for five microseconds just to wipe everything clean. Now that we've cleaned up the the signal and we know that it's not sending uh, the ultrasonic sensor is not sending any kind of waves we can now write it high and by doing that we're just going to do a digital write we're going to write the trig pin high so that now the ultrasonic sensor is sending an ultrasonic ping out into the world and we're going to have that ping last for 10 microseconds here so again delay for 10 microseconds now we just want to send a ping, so a single wave, a single pulse. So after that 10 microseconds, we want to make sure that we turn off the ultrasonic sensor here. So, so now we're just going to write it down low. And again, we don't, we don't need the delay on this one because the delays are simply a way to make sure that the path is clear. Uh, since we're working with sound, it's much slower than the circuit itself is actually able to create things. So we want to make sure that we're slowing everything down so that the sound waves are spaced out appropriately. But once we turn off the echo pin, that's good. Now that we have uh, made our pulse here, this whole thing is the pulse. We can now read, read uh, the pulse in. And this is a function that is native to Arduino, which is nice, makes it a lot easier. But we're going to time how long that pulse was. So we're going to go ahead and do duration, pulse in for echo pin high. So we're going to time how long it takes for the echo pin to go high. Uh, right now, the echo pin is basically set for, for zero, and we want to just wait for when it here's that pulse come back when it goes high. So now we have that duration. We know that this sound wave moved through air. So now we want to calculate the distance here. So in order to calculate the distance, we're going to actually do it uh, in centimeters based on the speed of sound. And the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. Let me get all this here for you. So if it's 343 meters per second, you need to do a couple of conversions to base 10 conversions to turn that into microseconds because we've been operating in microseconds. And we've got this conversion right here. So the speed of sound is that. If we know the speed of sound, then we can take the duration, divide it by two because the sound has to go out and come back and we only want the the one direction we want to know how far we are away from something so we want to divide the total flight time by two because it went out it hit the thing and then it came back the same distance so there we go and then multiply that which is the total time times the speed of sound in uh, centimeters there excuse me <coughs> um, now, this calculates how far away the ultrasonic sensor is from anywhere. Now, to go ahead and know what that value is, we want to print it out to the serial monitor. The little bot is connected here to the computer, so we just want to read what it's sending back to us. So we're going to print that distance, and that distance should be in centimeters. Double check everything. All the loops are closed. Everything else is there. I'm going to go ahead and auto format the whole thing again, make sure I didn't mess anything up. Okay, there we go. So now if we upload this, you'll want to go into tools, make sure you have the correct COM port selected. The processor is going to be the Atmega 328P. Uh, I'm using an older Arduino chip, so I'm using the old bootloader. 
Arduino Nano and make sure that you're using the Arduino Nano chip. There we go. So everything is good there. We should be able to upload that and see what happens here. Oh, there we go. Didn't type out the full variable. Okay, now if we open up the serial monitor, it's sitting on my desk, desk facing into empty space right now, so it's giving really high and almost random values because it's just bumping off of the wall. Uh, I'm going to put my hand in it about 6 inches, about uh, 10 centimeters away. There we are, 15. Hand moving in a little closer, moving out, so it's getting farther away, farther away, and in closer. Now you can see that every once in a while, the values kind of jump sometimes. Especially if you're using your hand, the values are going to jump a lot. Right now I've got a, a box in front of it, so it's really clean. But in case you want to clean that up, what you can do is you can take five values at a time and average them, and that will give you much cleaner uh, data back. But here we are. This, uh, the, the sensor is measuring distances. So up there really close, four centimeters, all the way out to 20 centimeters there. So that's a very simple demo. All right, guys, so now what I want to do uh, for you is actually walk through the Walter OS ultrasonic sensor read. Um, and it, here we are in the main Walter OS program that's, that's split into several sections. And I just want to compare this uh, with the actual uh, ultrasonic sensor code. So we're going to expand this out just a little bit. Oh, no, here we go. So here we go. Uh, open up Walter OS. There we are. So you've got all of the main definitions here for the servos and everything else, but then right here you've got the ultrasonic variables. And again, it's A2, A3, and then we're good to go. Then we've got the additional A0s and rest of the, the values down there. But we also have the ultrasonic sensor in a function. And the reason we do this is because it's much simpler to access this way. And it's also, this function is designed to work with multiple ultrasonic sensors, which is why you define as the arguments the echo pin and the trig pin. And then this function returns the centimeter distance that you can then read. Down here, let's see here, let's pick a component of it that's uh, using the sensor read. Uh, da, da, da. Right here. Ah, here we go. So red distance. Right here in this chunk of code, right along here, uh, we set in the desired delay, yada, yada, yada. In this for loop, we take 25 samples of the ultrasonic sensor, add them all up, and then take the average of them right here. And what that does is what I had discussed before. It evens out the signal. So if the ultrasonic sensor is up against the material that's sending weird echoes back um, and everything's bouncing around a lot, it evens it out so that you can get an average of how far away it is. So this is a cleaner way to do it. But again, we're just doing a single read here of the ultra sensor uh, function. And then down here where the function is actually defined, uh, here's the ultra sensor. You put the two variables or the two pins into it again, and it's basically the exact same code that we just wrote. There, this value right here is a little bit different than the uh, original ultra sensor. Here we've got it 0 0.03, uh, 0343 millimeters. Uh, by you, but we're also dividing by 58.2 instead of multiplying by it. So if you took 0 0.043, multiplied it by and the division by two and combined those algebraically, you would get 58.2. So that's why we have this different value. It was just a cleaner number. It doesn't show the steps as well, but that's why we have that there. And that's how uh, the little bot budgets uh, ultrasonic sensor detection works there, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And if there's any particular parts of Arduino or Arduino science that you would like to learn about, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, subscribe to this channel. We'll have a lot more content coming out about how to use Arduino and the tools and sensors around it. Thanks, everybody.